Hi all, I'm Catherine Randalls, Manager of Research Data Services in the eResearch Centre at JCU. Our team connects researchers to technology and the community, and today I'll be covering the management of data and information in research. This is Module 2, Research Data Management Plan. There's a lot to consider in planning out your research project. You'll need to determine what data needs to be collected, who has and will contribute to the research, who will own the data, where and for how long will it be stored, and how can it be used. In order to capture all of this project information, we've bundled it into one document called a Research Data Management Plan, or abbreviated to RDMP. The university has developed a data management platform called Research Data JCU. This is a user-friendly system with lots of help text, questions with prompts and links for further information. Help text is found throughout the system by simply clicking on the question mark icon. Research Data JCU guides researchers to develop three records. One, research data management plan, two, a data record, and three, a data publication. Access to this platform is via the URL provided and detailed login instructions are provided in Module 1 Overview under Section 1.5. The first section we're going to explore is creating a research data management plan. An, a, a, a research data management plan is to ideally be completed pre-project. So for HDR candidates, you are required to have your RDMP completed and reviewed by your primary advisor before your confirmation of candidature. When you begin your RDMP, you may not have or know all of the information to complete your plan, but it's important for you to progress through this record as it will prompt you to plan your project in full. The research data management plan is a living document and you are required to maintain and update it to reflect project changes as they occur and that's why the column on, in the table during a project is ticked. Increasingly funders require the RDMPs to be completed prior to the commencement of the research project to comply with their rules. It's also not a bad idea to have this completed and attached to any ethics application. It's also important to note that we launched our new data repository platform, which is Research Data JCU, in January of 2021. So that means any projects commencing from 2021 onwards require a research data management plan, a data record, a data publication, and a data publication. Um, for example, if you are a HDR candidate and in 2021 are already partway through your research project, a data record and data publication is required, but you are not required to retrospectively complete a research data management plan. RDMPs are often required by funding bodies such as the Australian Research Council, the ARC, and are critical to your risk management processes, including helping to reduce the loss um, the risk of loss and unauthorised use of your data. You'll need to um, about one hour to complete your initial RDMP and it's a good idea to have all your relevant documents on hand such as grant information, for and SEO codes, funding agreements, ethics approvals etc. However if you don't have this information you can still get started on your research data management plan and always save your plan and come back later and add these details. As you will need to review your RDMP, simply click view and update RDMP to continually update your plan because a lot of this information is then auto-populated into the data record and data publication, which is super convenient. I won't step you through um, the RDMP in full because the system is really quite intuitive. However, I do want to highlight a couple of areas. While you don't need to complete every question, as some may not apply, if you do start to skip questions or provide the barest of information, you're not really giving your project the best start to succeed. It's also handy to note that once you have created your RDMP, you should get into the habit of saving this as you progress. The save icon is at the bottom of every tab. The RDMP isn't only your planning record, it also gets you to start thinking about your data and questions that you may not have thought about as yet. So for example, what data are you going to collect? Where is the data from? What policies apply to the data? 
Who will own and have access to the data? What data management practices will be used? How will the data be stored and accessed during the project? What facilities and equipment will be required? And who will be responsible for each of these activities? We're going to skip ahead to the People tab now. This, is, this section is where you identify your project teams. These roles are important to understand as they have different access rights throughout the system which are relevant during as well as post project. For example, once a HDR candidate has graduated or an academic staff member has left JCU, the research data and information assets related to any research projects still need to be managed. Some of the roles that you will need to be familiar with include the lead investigator. For HDR projects, this is the HDR candidate themselves. Other data creators. Now this is a little confusing um, as we've had to develop a workaround in the system. So for our purposes, other data creators are only internal JCU data creators. However, as you can imagine, it's completely possible to have external data creators involved in your project. At this stage, the lookup field is only able to recognise people internal to JCU. This means that you'll need to add any external data creators as a collaborator. Now don't fret, when you get to this section, the help text will remind you of this explanation. Next is data managers. So a data manager must be employed at JCU and can include adjuncts. For a HDR project, the data manager is the primary advisor for the HDR candidate. For JCU research projects, the data manager is either the lead investigator or another researcher delegated by the lead investigator. Record administrator. So this field has been auto-filled to the login details of whoever is creating the record. This role can be reassigned to a designated administrator if required. If reassigning, please ensure you complete the name and email address in full. And next, collaborators. So this includes all collaborators, internal and external to JCU, associated with your research project. And remember, any external data creators. Next, we move to data storage. These questions prompt you to think about the potential size of the data you're planning to collect. This is actually really important as the size of your data needs to be well thought out at the start of your project. It's no good completing a project and having a whopping two terabytes of data as the university can't provide that level of storage, not to mention the actual cost involved of storing it, let alone sharing it. This doesn't mean that you can't have two terabytes of data, but if you know that you'll have even, let's just say, 500 gigabytes, you still need to plan the most appropriate place to store this data. This will also prompt a member of our team to get in touch to discuss what options are available to you for larger data sizes. Other questions relate to where you'll store data during your project, including any backup versions. The data retention and disposal tab gets you to think about what data it is that you're collecting and for how long you'll need to keep this data. JCU and every other university has policies on this which are driven by government and funding requirements. Each case needs to be determined by the specific type of research. For example, areas such as gene therapy need to retain their research data permanently. But in general, the minimum retention period is five years from the end of the year of the last referred publication or other form of public release. You can, however, extend the minimum retention period if you believe that your data is significant. So I just want to highlight some really important documents that you need to be familiar with. Firstly, JCU Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research, specifically Section 2.5, and the University Sector Retention and Disposal Schedule for Queensland Universities. Um, and of course, your research output, for example, your publication or thesis, well, that also needs to be stored. However, you can find out more about those requirements in the Research Repository Policy, which is located on JCU's Policy Library. The Access and Rights tab is next and it prompts you to think about some of the legal issues involving copyright and intellectual property. Obviously all tabs and questions are important, however this tab is really, really, really important. 
you as in sorry you and we as in JCU need to know for example are there any third party owners of the data or are there any contractual obligations or licenses that will apply to previously obtained data this section allows you to upload any contract or the data terms of the contract so that these arrangements are easily available Please note that attaching contract documents, you must click save at the bottom of the, of the page first to then allow you to upload. At this stage, you'll also need to identify the country in which you'll be collecting your data as the copyright and IP protections of that country will need to be applied. And if you'll be collecting Australian Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander data as additional permissions may be needed. After considering these aspects, you'll need to assign one of three types of data access conditions, open, conditional, or restricted. Although JCU strongly recommends data access remain open, this isn't always possible or appropriate. So it's a really important tab to give some thought to and complete. Next, we come to ethics and sensitivities. This is where you'll list your ethics and uh, approval number, if you have one, um, the location of any supporting documentation, any types of sensitive um, or sensitivity, and additional information about privacy or confidentiality and how the data needs to be managed. Congratulations, you've now completed your RDMP. Ensure you click save and close. So as you can see, the RDMP is quite detailed and prompts you to consider a lot of aspects of your project. Its intent is not to overwhelm you, but to help and support you as you get started on your project. Before you start, collecting your data is almost, it's, it's important to think about the different aspects of managing your active data. Remembering too that if you're collecting data from a third party, you need to be aware of and understand any contractual requirements regarding the data. As you're collecting and organizing your data, be sure to record its metadata. This will not only make it easier for you to find, access and analyze the data as your project continues, but will also make the completion of your research data management plan and your research project quicker and easier. For those of you unfamiliar with metadata, this is what we record to describe, explain, locate, or otherwise make it easy to use or manage data. Or more simply put, it's data about data. You'll also need to document information about your data so that someone else can understand your analysis in the way that you intended, or for you to take a year off and be able to pick up where you left off. Ask yourself, what information would users need to understand the data? What information would users need to understand the data? How will you make sure that inf that information is captured? And are there any existing conventions or standards that you can use? Documenting this information is sometimes referred to as a data dictionary and would include descriptions of variables. Oops, sorry, I'll just go back. <laughs> Um, so it would include um, descriptions of variables or fields and their value, um, code labels, classification schemes and abbreviation lists, tips on usage, things like exceptions, quirks and questionable results. The data dictionary should then accompany your data, your research information, wherever it goes and be updated whenever your research information is updated. When developing your file names and dictionaries, or, or directories, sorry, make sure the structure is always logical and easy to use. So use names that are informative, not just data.doc. Use a consistent naming system that includes version control. Don't use too many levels and weed out duplicate or invalid files as soon as they're identified. So once you've collected your data, you'll need to clean it, or otherwise known as wrangle your data to get it ready for analysis or visualization. To minimize your efforts during this stage, we encourage the use of data sheets, electronic forms, and software. Your analysis may also identify that you need to collect more or different data, and so the cycle continues. Now we'll move on to developing a data record under the Manage icon in Module 3. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for joining me.